हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड हैप्पी हेल्दी ऑल राइट सो टुडे आई एम बैक विथ अनदर रीसेंट टॉपिक विच एक्चुअली डिड हैव अ ग्रेट इम्पैक्ट ऑन मोस्ट ऑफ द जावा एप्लीकेशन ऑल अराउंड द वर्ल्ड सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड लाइक लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट इज इट सो इफ यू हैव been uh, working on any of your java applications you must definitely have heard something from the upper management or from your project leads or you know from your technology department that something called uh, um log 4g or it's also called a zero day exploit issue has been encountered and uh, people overnight have uh, you know patched it and uh, tried to mitigate that issue right so all over the industry software industry it did shock everybody out there now uh, let's uh, understand what is this and how it all started so back in 2021 december there was uh, someone from china who actually figured out that the popular log 4j logging mechanism is actually exploited to a great vulnerability okay so the moment it was identified it has been reported to the apache uh, foundation team who did actually look into the details of the issue and they did confirm that yes whatever was reported it is true and it is really a big big threat and vulnerable area so now uh, we all know that most of our applications are java based right it's a very very popularly used open source tool now uh, we choose open source for various reasons right uh, we try to avoid licensing and usually when we pick up any open source it is exposed to lots and lots of eyes like lot of people very talented people and you know they go through the code like the source code like it's it's all open to public right it's open source come on so you definitely will find out the issues pretty much fast because it is exposed to wide range of people right at least that was our assumption at least until now now something that happened <laughs> in the end of 2020 when gave all of us like a big shock and now we definitely have to think of what we have been using or probably like big companies like amazon netflix i mean there are lots and lots of companies that use java right so definitely they now have to think about uh, you know what or what uh, steps that they have to take in order to avoid these uh, vulnerabilities or at least to identify way in uh, advance now so uh, what did we do like after we realized that there is an issue right so we did come up like each, we did come up with the mitigation plan so immediately if you come in, come or run across something like this right by the way this did come up on the mainstream media as well so i uh, so whatever information i am sharing with you i have been uh, googling it and i have been going over various videos and i definitely thought that this is something that every software engineer must know it is not a developers thing guys by the way so as an automation engineer like most of us work on uh, java based automation uh, frameworks right we definitely have to understand what is that which was exposed right we uh, at least like from my set of friends or my set of colleagues with whom I, i worked in the past right we did overnight fixes we mitigated it and later we patched it so we are good but why did we do all of this right we should i just went um and checked like what is the issue like what <laughs> for which i am um, exposed or my application was exposed and what is that i did uh, to fix it right so that really opened my eyes like i definitely um, feel like every one of us should understand this now um, there is something called cvss score common uh, vulnerability scoring system right what it's it's again like a, i think a voluntary organization like if you have already used security testing tools like app spider is one of the paid uh, tool that i'm aware of and uh, there is a zap proxy which is uh, pretty um, common and which is very widely used these days so these uh, security tools right they go on something called the top vulnerable list so when you run the security tool on your application it will scan it through the internal internal apis or whatever right it will scan 
and it it did it do it does have this set of 10 uh, security vulnerable areas which uh, it will identify whether your application is vulnerable to any of these set of uh, vulnerabilities or not now who is coming up with this list so there are some volunteers so unfortunately there is uh, very less funding in this area that i um, figured out that not many companies are coming forward and you know funding this either they would do it for some uh, you know pr purpose like a 10 percent or uh, that, that too like a very very big companies right they do dedicate some percentage of uh, um, the returns on this but it is a uh, comparatively less with whatever we have seen in the past right is this uh, way too less so with whatever 10 top 10 uh, that have been identified we scan our applications and we say that it's all good now the cvss score for this particular vulnerability that was exposed right the log 4j vulnerability they gave it as 10 now 10 being the highest vulnerable area right so this is something like alarming right even the time magazine published a article about it that you know this uh, all the java applications are exposed to this now imagine when something like this happens right so, so as a software developer we try to patch it mitigate it now there is the other side of the um, uh, area where people try to exploit it right uh, probably they wouldn't have known about this issue until then but when the mainstream media is talking about it who would not take advantage of it when they really intend or when they purposefully are hackers right that gave them opportunity to exploit more and more so it just happened i think in a week's time that they had mitigated it they released a new patch and everything was resolved all these main companies like uh, you know they did resolve it but again risk is always risk right people might have sat like overnight to break something or to do so let, let's understand what it is all about now i did talk about that cvss now we know that it is half the highest vulnerability threat that had happened to the um, log 4j library what 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 is it like why did they rate it so high right <clears throat> because there's something called remote code execution so this is enabling this particular um, issue is enabling remote code execution so this is something very very high alarming okay so the, it is doing that with the help of jndi lookup feature I'll tell you like what is the lookup feature as well but uh, before that I just want to uh, highlight this there is something uh, comparable uh, uh, risky item called uh, SQL injections so uh, in your security testing just uh, giving an example if you figure out that there is a SQL injection uh, vulnerability what would you do you will write away like fix it overnight you have to sit and read because SQL injections are considered as the highest vulnerability if your um, application is vulnerable to the SQL injection, right, it, you will not move to production period. It has to be fixed <coughs> immediately on a high priority. Now, SQL injection uh, is another topic, but it will let a user, if you send something in the query parameter, right, instead of ending it, it will start a new query to get some confidential information or to do something. Like it is opening a new query altogether to the, your da database, which means that you can do anything with that, right? So it's it's definitely like a high risky one and this is something which is compared to the SQL injection vulnerability. So mitigations there are many like how did we mitigate or what are the solutions that were uh, uh, proposed after people identified this we will talk about it uh, in the coming uh, minutes okay so i just want to um, talk about the features so if you have seen this logger library right so as i mentioned here uh, feature one the logger library will let you log your error messages and uh, you all know like as an automation engineers and as software developers like we know the importance of logging right we definitely want and encourage people to add logging messages because uh, it would come in handy while you you're debugging or if you want uh, someday if you want to go back and check something like what happened at this particular time or something it will it will help you now there's a common way of logging like you know you just log log uh, use that logger library and then uh, get the error message and if you see in this uh, feature one i've included like error message and this the we are getting the error message and putting them into the string and returning and logging so the particular file that way we want to log will capture this error message and just record it there 
very well and good we have been using um, this since years and it's all going fine now what is the second feature right okay i have never used it and honestly like uh, until it is exposed i was not aware of it thankfully because we don't know like um, it's not very widely used as feature one but it does exist so um, they as many people who do not know there might be the same set of people who do know also we don't know how many were already exploited right so this is something called jndi lookups in 2013 right i think yeah in 2013 they introduced uh, some some contributor from java library they introduced this uh, java naming and directory interface right this are uh, these are called jndi lookups so what what does it do is it just adds some prefix messages so there is a config file where they have these prefix messages of for logging right and if you want some prefix message to look up you would just pass uh, pass the config details and then you would fetch that prefix message attach it to your string and then store it the purpose the intention was really good but you know what it exposed to it it did expose to the most highest vulnerability ever what what does it do like let me show you an example here all right so uh, imagine you have a search application so the jndi lookup also has this ldap urls like you know we you, as a user you can search for any term right so instead of searching something like as if a hacker does pass the ldap url the jl does look up for the jndi ldap url it would still hit your application the moment it sees the jndi lookup the call would go to the jndi server right the whatever server so it doesn't matter what it returns the request to the search item might not exist but still we see that the call is it is looking up right now the moment it hits the server here there might be some static code over here like you know the malicious code which would still create a serialized object the purpose of creating this jndi lookup is to have the prefix messages and once you hit that configuration right it would uh, return back the serialized objects now once it hits or creates an object the object gets created in your jvm in your application that is it right what else uh, we want like we we see see once you have the object in your code that you did not create imagine what could you do you can do pretty much everything right so that is the highest exposure that have been identified and which is called as log 4j vulnerability and that was coming in this bucket jndi lookup issue so once this was identified like you know as uh, i have said the cvss score is uh, they, they rated it as 10 and uh, there is also a developer security company uh, which i wanted to talk that uh, identified that around 60 percent of um, log 4j java based applications do use log 4j indirectly not directly only 40 percent like 39 point uh, something they use it directly now you see like you know we if if i look at this issue I might think that I'm not using this at all, right? I might, oh, I, I might think that, uh, okay, my, my application is not dependent on log4j, I'm fine. But who knows, we might be indirectly using this also. And even if we have a point not 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 one percent doubt of you being uh, using this, we should immediately mitigate it. So what can we do? Now, companies started thinking like instead of, uh, you know, identifying whether my, um, our application is impacted or maybe I'm using a library which is actually uh, dependent on this log 4j let me first mitigate it so what they have uh, did is they have come up with a number of uh, you know workarounds for that so one of them was like you know trusting uh, there is something on the JVM uh, where you can set the trust URL uh, code base like you know strictly no false that's a flag which you can enable disable that if you see any remote um, URL never go it to that or never hit it you are strictly you know stopping it but again we we, we don't know like you know how it would affect your application so this is one of the mitigation plan that uh, they have uh, like you know identified and companies started doing that immediately and uh, the solution right we did get 2.16 which is the patched version i think the latest is 2.17 that is like a stable one which was released couple of days after this is identified 
so if you are using any dependency uh, you know uh, tools like you know the helper tools like gradle or anything there you can strictly like you know uh, not allow uh, anything lower versions and you can ask it to prefer only the version the patched version that is 2.17 and you know so on so there are a number of ways how uh, the solution can be implemented but this is something which had to be done like you know uh, maybe a day or two was very much uh, max like we had to stop everything i did talk to some of my friends in other companies like a very very big big companies like where they had to stop their development or stop this print to identify or fix these issues of course it is already out there in the production right so they we have to make some fix and roll it out immediately when something like this was identified so this is uh, what i uh, learned about it recently and i definitely thought we should uh, talk about it and we should be aware of this issue there are a lot of videos out there i would definitely recommend you if you are interested just go and check it out and uh, i would also suggest uh, checking navin automation labs uh, youtube video on this because uh, he actually did uh, mm, uh, you know before and after scenarios like he did uh, have a lower version of log4j installed and he replicated the issue what exactly was happening and then he patched it to the latest 2.17 where he um, showed us that it did not happen so if you are really interested and if you have time i would encourage you to understand the issue and get hands on it like you know next time when something like this happens right we will know what needs to be done or you know in what direction we need to think and uh, also i would like to emphasize on one point before ending uh, this session guys so as a qa engineer right uh, what do you feel right now like you know how comfort but we do sign off but uh, we we are open to so many different kinds of threats like this we don't know how vulnerable our open source tools that we are using are right so at least like from my point uh, the takeaway that i took is anything that i'm testing and signing off has to go through the security testing for sure uh, we give importance to functional testing we div give importance to performance testing and so we have to give importance to security testing as well doesn't matter whether it is internal or external application guys i'm telling you like you know the week uh, we can debate whether you know because my application is internal i might not i need not do it but we never know what kind of vulnerabilities we are exposed to when we have a tool open source tools online like you know when we know that the identified set of risks are these why not like give it a shot like just run it once if you see any issues report it to the team it is again the priority like if they really want to if anything like uh, you know jndi lookup or a sql injection is found right i am sure they would not move forward with the release so get it fixed or get it get it to the attention of your project uh, team like what kind of uh, issues you are seeing from the security per perspective right also give importance to security before you sign off that is um, something that uh, my takeaway was after uh, you know going through this and uh, looking at the news and uh, understanding the impact of this issue so i wanted to share this with you i hope this helps uh, you uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it and if you do not like it definitely comment what you do not like from what i am sharing so that i can you know improve from the next video i definitely would love to stay in touch with you all guys so happy testing we are doing we are already doing great we will do great we will continue to learn new stuff and grow together all right happy testing guys take care bye bye